Hi, I'm Jono, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. So as you know, pencil is my medium of choice. I, I really love working with pencil. It's really great to get beautiful, soft textures, um, and there's a lot of sensitivity to pencil. But the downside of pencil is that it's quite a dull medium, meaning that most pencil drawings tend to look quite flat and, and lack contrast. So in this video, I want to share with you three methods that I've learned over the years to try and get really dark values out of my pencils. Also, a huge thank you once again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's jump into it. So first off, let me show you what tones I can squeeze out of a 2B mechanical pencil. You can actually get really dark values with the 2B lead inside a mechanical pencil because the surface area is really small. So you have quite a, a small point of contact with the paper. And so your lines with very little pressure will go quite dark. Next, I'm gonna move over to an 8B just standard pencil. The brand I use is Faber-Castell and these are the darkest that Faber-Castell pencils go. I know with like other pencil companies, they are slightly darker graphites that they mix with something else, but I prefer to use Faber-Castell pencils and so I'm stuck with an 8B. But there's a lot you can do with an AB. They go really dark. Um, I think a tip as well, and this is quite self-explanatory, but the harder you press, the darker your values will get. I know it's obvious, but there's a lot of artists that I've seen out there struggling with contrast, and it's just because they aren't pushing hard enough. Um, a way to try and work with this is to get your 8B pencil out and push as hard as you can, see the values that you get. The problem that you'll soon see is that when you push very hard with your pencil directly onto your paper, you get a patina or a reflectiveness in your graphite. And this can be really distracting, especially if you're trying to get this uniform, clean, dark look. Um, the advice that I've given most artists struggling with the reflectiveness of graphite is to know your medium and accept that it is a reflective medium, know that it's going to have that shine. So if you can work with that in mind, so you work intentionally, knowing that your strokes will be visible in the reflection, it makes you more mindful of the way that you're working with it. In other words, have all your strokes go in the same direction to try and have a more clean look. Or if you want a messy look, know that you will see those strokes and that's maybe a feature or a characteristic in your artwork. It's a part of the medium and know that it will be there in your artworks. There are ways to get around it though and that brings me to the next method, which is using cotton wool and graphite powder. Cotton wool and graphite powder gives you a kind of a matte finish, which removes that reflectiveness. The problem with this is that you can't get between really fine details, so it's quite a, uh, a clumsy way of applying graphite. You get this beautiful, very dark, smooth finish, but you have to try and transition that with your detailed work, which can be really difficult, especially if there's something like flowers or anything in between. I've been struggling a lot with my current drawing at the moment trying to get in between my flowers with a really like uniform background. So it's something that you constantly have to try and battle with and weigh up the pros and cons with using this method versus using just a, a normal pencil and, and getting that dark value. And another factor in this is the paper that you use. So I've spoken about this a lot as well, but if you want to get the most out of your pencils, use high quality paper. A lot of people use bristle board, which I used to use many years ago, and I don't remember it being that flexible or being able to get the dark values that I was looking for out of bristle board without damaging the paper from pushing so hard. So I use Archer's Aquarelle 300 gram hot press paper. The grain is called Satine grain. Um, so it's a very smooth paper, but it absorbs a lot of graphite and that plays a massive role in the tones that I can achieve with pencils. So uh, you can use Fabriano. There's loads of paper brands out there that are making high quality paper that will help you get the most out of your pencils or out of your graphite. So this goes hand in hand with using good quality paper, but applying it with cotton wool and graphite powder gives you a more matte finish. You don't really have that reflectiveness, which ends up with the value of the pencil work looking darker. The next thing I started doing was experimenting with solvents and graphite. So this can help you get even darker with your pencil work, but this starts to become a little bit more messy. You can't erase this almost at all. Um, even if you apply the previous method with the cotton wool and the graphite, you can actually still erase a bit of that, which means it's more flexible and, and still more forgiving. Using a solvent, mixing in your graphite with a solvent has show me some pretty amazing results in terms of getting really rich uh, dark tones from my pencil, but it's unforgiving. You can ruin your artworks with this method, so 
work carefully, experiment before you do this. Another thing is also solvents are toxic, so you can really damage your health if you use this in an unventilated space or if you aren't wearing a mask or even gloves, they can absorb through the skin in your fingers. So I'd really caution you to work with protection, get a really well ventilated room um, and just be careful when working with solvents. Also they're flammable, so obviously just be careful. But yeah, the results that you can get with solvents are incredible. You can get really rich, dark tones um, and then you just have to wait for it to, to dry and you will see that it will obviously be darker while the solvent paste with graphite is still wet and then as it dries you'll see that it kind of becomes a little bit more dull but it's still a lot darker than you'd get with just plain cotton wool or definitely with just applying graphite to paper. Another challenge that I found with using solvents is that it's very hard to marry the, the tone of the solvent with your pencil work and your drawing. So if you're using the solvent as a background, what I'd do to try and marry the two would be to use the blend um, on a random piece of paper just to try and soften it, get most of the moisture out. And then when it's almost semi-dry, then go back into the drawing and use that semi-dry piece of cotton wool to try and blend through the very dark values of the, the solvent with my pencil drawing. Again, this can be really risky because if you slip up or if you, it's not dry enough, you can then destroy your drawing or destroy parts of your drawing by going too dark. So if you guys want to use this, uh, use this tip, please experiment. Be very careful. Please don't ruin your artworks. And then lastly, which is something new for me that I've been experimenting with, um, it's actually a tip that someone on my Patreon suggested when I was sharing some of the, the techniques that I was using. They suggested that I use linseed oil. And so I got myself some refined linseed oil and started experimenting with it. The, the benefit of linseed oil is that it's not toxic. So you can use it in an environment and you won't get headaches and it won't poison you over time, which is what I've been doing to myself for the last couple of years. And also the finish seems to be a little bit darker and really smooth. So I'm really excited about working with linseed oil and just the results are really cool. I'm still experimenting more with it, but I definitely think you guys should give it a try. If you're looking for dark values, try use it in the same way that you use the solvent. So I take a piece of cotton wool, mix it in with the linseed oil, mix the graphite into it as well, and apply it like a paste very lightly at first and, and see how it works for you. The problem with linseed oil is that it takes ages to dry, like days even. So I'm still waiting for my tests to all dry so that I can see how it looks, um, if the value is any darker than the solvent. Um, but so far, it looks like it is. It looks like it's more smooth than the solvent value as well. So that's quite exciting for me. One more portion with using linseed oil is that when linseed oil reacts with oxygen, it is a chemical reaction and it generates heat. So if you're using paper towels or tissue to wipe up any linseed oil that's messed, and throw that in the bin, that's going to slowly start generating heat and there's a lot of cases where it actually ignites and can cause a fire. So if you want to avoid burning your studio down, please be careful with how you dispose of the linseed oil. Just know that it is a flammable substance or that it generates heat. Um, so make sure that whatever tissues or anything that you're using, um, either throw them somewhere else or, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I've just kind of left mine somewhere in the studio where air is moving over it to make sure that it doesn't start a fire somewhere. So don't throw them in the bin. They might start a fire. That's obviously dreadful. So um, just be careful with how you dispose of it. Maybe do some research as well of your own to, to figure out a safe way to, to get rid of your linseed oil scraps. Before I end this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. They actually helped my career out in a huge way very early on, just by having an easy platform for me to create an online portfolio. If you're a creative or an artist or anyone trying to develop a, a career, it's so important to have an online portfolio to help clients find you and to make it easy for them to get in touch with you. And for me, I felt that Squarespace just did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them or set up an online store. And most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use this offer code and get 10% off your first purchase. So there we go. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any methods of getting really dark values out of your pencil or different ways of, of doing what I've described in this video. If you found it helpful, uh, leave a like. It helps the channel out in a huge way. And as always, thanks for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.